questions. Our first question is going to come from Jason Brown. Go ahead with your question, Jason. Thank you, Matt. Hey, William. Jason Brown with Spectrum News 1 in Charlotte. Always good to see you. Obviously, you know, great consistency of late. You've had some pretty good runs at Kansas uh, last year. I'm curious, the confidence that you must be carrying into this weekend's event, is that more from the experience you've had the past few seasons, or is there just the, the chemistry with your new crew chief and the team or something with the car? Yeah, I think it's – um Honestly, the the last few weeks have just been a result of just the chemistry we have and um, working really well together. I feel like we're all on the same page and we're also getting really fast cars from the shop, you know, with Chad's work and every everybody at the shop. You know, the, the engines have been really good, I'd say, since, you know, probably second half of last year. So all those things have kind of played a role. But I think for us, we're going into some of these tracks that are some of our best tracks. So um, I feel really confident that Kansas is a place we can go there and try to win. And, um, you know, I think we've gotten through a couple obstacles with the Bristol dirt race was definitely one that we, we thought we were going to really struggle, uh, Talladega and, uh, Richmond. So we've kind of gotten through those. Thanks buddy. Good luck. Thank you. Our next question will come from Kelly Crandall. Go ahead, Kelly. Thanks, Matt. Hey, William, I got two for you. If you can hear me all right. Yep. Um, the first is with this streak that you're on, you are obviously uh, one of the, <laughs> you are the leading Hendrick guy right now. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, you are the leading Hendrick guy right now. Uh, maybe the leading Chevrolet guy. So just curious, should the series, should the cup series, should the competition be taking you guys more seriously right, right now? Should we, the media be uh, giving you guys a little more attention with the streak that you're on? Um, yeah. I mean, I think that, I mean, yes and no. I think that as soon as we win another race, hopefully soon, we, you know, you guys will be forced to talk about us and the competition will be forced to, uh, to deal with us. But I think, yeah, I mean, we're running well, we're, we're in the mix every week. Um, you know, I feel like the competition around us probably, probably knows that and understands that. So, um, you know, I think it's just a, a matter of just continuing to execute and put ourselves in position to, uh, to make, you know, make ourselves have a chance at winning more races. So honestly that, um, yeah, I don't, I don't focus much on the other people we're racing against. I just focus on doing, doing what we can to uh, try to win. So we're, we're doing that every week so far. And then I was just curious when you, with this streak and you talked about Sunday, how the team has kind of taken that next step that you've been looking for with the consistency, what does that do for you? What does that change for you going to the racetrack? And maybe you, just your confidence that you're now showing up every week with a car that's going to be a contender. I mean, yeah, I think you said it. it's confidence. I think that, you know, I show up to the track every week now knowing that I can, uh, I can prepare the way that I, have been and uh and have success so honestly just um keep preparing the way that i've been doing it you know a little bit of a little bit of eye racing a little bit of uh film you know talking with my guys we have great meetings throughout the week so we've got a really good system going feel like we're able to uh to go to every racetrack and you know really just kind of build on what we've been doing good deal our next question will come from marty sicala go ahead with the question marty Thanks, man. Hey, William. Thanks for taking the time. Hope you're well, man. Um, no doubt this has been your best start to, start to a season by far in the Cup Series. What do you think has improved from last season that has led to this current streak of top tens you're on? Yeah, I mean, it's been everything. Like I've, like I've said, I think it's, um, you know, communication, chemistry. I feel like the fact that we're getting good cars from the shop is really important. You can't overlook that. Uh, you're only as good as really the speed of your car and you know, the, the effort that goes into that is tremendous. So um, I feel like it's, um, yeah, it's just, it's really everything. I mean, there's not, there's not one thing that sticks out. I mean, we've worked on, we've worked on the pit crew. We've worked on, you know, my communication with my tap, with my spotter tab, uh, communication with Rudy. It's, it's kind of everything. So, um, you know, everything is going better this year. And then just looking into the weekend, you come into Kansas with three consecutive top tens uh, in the last three races there. Just wondering if you can talk about what is it that you like at Kansas? Is it like multiple grooves or is it coming into you with the, this package? What is it that you like about it? Um, I think it's just a, 
a track that I have good memories on. Um, it's a track that's pretty straightforward. It's not, you know, it's not one of those unique places that experience really matters. I think it's just, uh, you know, about having the right combination with your car, having the right feel. Um, so I, I think it's just one of those standard, you know, mile and a half tracks. It's kind of, um, you know, it's not anything special, but I feel like we've done a good job of trying to identify what, what we need in the car there. And, uh, it's worked the, the past couple of times. Great. Thank you, William. Best of luck to you this weekend, man. Our next question will come from Jeff Megalichetti. Go with the question, Jeff. Hey, William. Thanks for joining us today. Thanks for taking the time. You know, this hot streak somewhat dates back to last season. You win the regular season finale, perform pretty well during the playoffs. Was there any signature, any single like aha moment where you realized you turned a corner, your team had turned a corner and that you guys had it and you were ready to build on this momentum into what's, what's happening right now? Um, gosh, I, I think honestly, there's, there's not really a specific turning point. Um, you know, I think we've, we've really relied heavily on our teammates, you know, Chase's run, really well over the past, you know, six, seven months, you know, winning the championship and all that. So honestly, we've relied heavily on, you know, some of their setups, some of the things that Chase says, you know, trying to get my driving style a little bit closer, um, you know, to what the setup needs and the car needs. So um, it's a little bit everything. Like I said, I don't think it's really one specific turning point, but we have, uh, you know, we just, we continue to bring more speed to the track and uh, we've kind of found a, a good setup for a lot of these places. On that note, Chase Elliott, you, it sounds like he's a bit of a mentor to you, which is impressive even at a young, young age. What's the best piece of advice he's giving you during your shared time together at Hendrick thus far? Well, I think he just does a good job. You know, he, he does a really good job with the details. Um, he and Alan have kind of been the standard at Hendrick for three years now. So they are kind of, you know, the, I guess the, the benchmark that we've had to all chase. So I feel like I touched on that go, going into this season was the fact that those guys are, those guys are the standard. And so um, we've got to try to, you know, match that standard or try to improve upon it. And we've, we have a lot of respect for those guys, you know, what they, their effort, the way that they execute races, the way that chase drives, all those things. So we've tried to um, try to work on that and, uh, make it our own. Well, awesome. Keep up the great work, William. Thank you. Thanks. Our next question will come from Dustin Long. Go ahead with the question, Dustin. Thank you, William. Um, I know you got many other things uh, to be focused on, but certainly for Hendrick Motorsports, the organization's two wins away from petty enterprises, from tying the, the record number of wins by an organization. So you certainly could have the opportunity here in the near future to to, to give Hendrick Motorsports that tying win or, or to make Hendrick Motorsports the winningest uh, organization in NASCAR history. Um, just kind of what your thoughts would be of, of if, if you were the one to, to be able to achieve that, give that to Rick and, and the organization. Yeah, I'd be huge. I mean, we've, we talked about it before this season started. Um, the, the boss, boss man's pretty excited for that. And I feel like it's, you know, it's a matter of time, but um, I was a race fan or when they were trying to get to 200 and it took a little bit just with the circumstances, but hopefully it takes a little bit uh, less time this time around. But yeah, I think it's, uh, that's obviously on all, all of our minds right now is trying to get to that, that number. Uh, you know, I think this, this place just means so much to, um, to Mr. H and he's put so much of his time and effort into it. Um, and I just feel like it's, it's worth it that we pay him back with, uh, that important win soon. Thank you. Our next question will come from Claire B. Lang. Go ahead with the question, Claire. Thank you. So my question is this, you make it sound so easy, including, you know, the way you're running right now and the things you've tackled. What was the hardest thing for you that, uh, because you always made it look easy as you tackled all this. I, I can remember the day when you came over to talk to your team before you even started as the driver. And I noticed how you were so good with all your soon to be team members and were very comfortable about it. But what was the hard part of all of it for you? Well, I think the hard part was just uh, learning the cup series. I mean, the, I'd say for 
two years, I really was felt out, out of the box. I felt uncomfortable, I guess, in a way. I kind of felt like I was, you know, in order to produce the results and um, be up front, I had to really drive uh, kind of in a way kind of over your head. So, you know, I think that's just, um, you notice that with a lot of the rookies, it's just kind of, it's so tough the the transition from Xfinity to cup is just, um, I don't think anyone really can quantify that. So I think there was in a way, some unnecessary standards kind of put on me when I got to cup to uh, perform a certain way because of how I had quickly kind of ascended, but none of that really mattered once I got to cup because I almost had to relearn a lot of things, uh, which I feel like similar for anyone that comes in, I'd say in the modern, modern day racing, how it is now. Uh, you know, with less practice, with um, really smart engineers, all those things. So um, I think that's the biggest challenge I had. So now when you walk into the garage, even though you're very, very young, right? Do you just feel like this is my place, you know, I'm here and you feel much more comfortable with, with everything being thrown at you now? Yeah, I don't feel uncomfortable at all. You know, I don't, I don't look at any of the people I race against as, uh, you know, as any different. You know, I, I treat everyone the same, I feel like now. And uh, whereas when I was coming into this series, guys like Jimmy Johnson, you know, Kyle Busch, Kevin Harvick, I, I raced for Kyle Busch. So that was uh, nerve wracking to race against him every week. And uh, those things were there, those elements of kind of, um, you know, feeling like I was out of place was there. So once you kind of get past that feeling, um, which you have to have the results to have that feeling go away. So it comes hand in hand. Uh, with results. Thanks so much and good luck this weekend. Good to talk to you. Thank you. Our next question will come from Cole Quizamano. Go ahead with the question, Cole. Thank you, Matt. Hey, William, thank you for your time today. Um, we're going on almost 10 years since the last repave at Kansas, and you hear lots of people saying it's starting to develop some character. Have you noticed any difference in recent years, and what do you anticipate for Sunday? Yeah, I think it's just now getting optimal. I mean, it takes, it's amazing it takes that many years, but yeah, it's, uh, I mean, Kansas is just now becoming a really good character racetrack that is uh, challenging for the drivers, uh, challenging for the crew chief to set up, to have the right setup. So changes throughout the race, all those things that you want in a racetrack that, that make it, uh, that make the best teams kind of rise to the top. So I feel like, uh, yeah, it's, it's becoming a really awesome racetrack. I feel like it's um, becoming closer to a homestead than, than, uh, than really a Vegas Um you know, I'd put Vegas kind of in the category of Charlotte, uh, really coarse asphalt that doesn't really wear that much. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's becoming an awesome racetrack. I love it. And you mentioned the collaboration process with your teammates. What's it been like having Kyle Larson to work with now? And what has he brought to the table to better the organization and yourself? Yeah, I think Larson's just, a, you know, there's two different, there's a lot of different kinds of drivers. But uh, to put it simple, I mean, Larson's just a feel guy. You know, he just... He just feels it, and uh, that's really cool to have around because I feel like he's uh, he's not really in, in uh, entrenched in the data and all those things. He just honestly tells the team what whether the car's loose or tight or or tight in a certain area, and um, yeah, he just works on it that way. So it's cool to have a a guy that keeps things simple. Thank you. Good luck this weekend. Thank you. We got time for one more question. That question is going to come from Lee Spencer. Go ahead with the question, Lee. Super, thank you. And thank you for joining us, William. Mm -hmm. um, you, you were talking about a little bit about confidence and I would guess that the performance, you know, breeds even more confidence. Is that kind of what you have found? Yeah, I think for sure. It's like uh, what comes first, you know, the chicken or the egg. I think it's kind of for this situation um, in NASCAR, I think performance is kind of that, that needle mover for confidence, at least for me, it's always been that way. You know, I grew up Everyone kind of told me the biggest thing I heard from coming from legend cars was, Oh man, you're not going to win as much, you know? So how do you, how do you find confidence in other ways? Well, I think it comes from, you know, working with your crew chief, figuring out how to make the car faster. Um, you know, there are small victories, you know, and finishing, for example, finishing top 10 at Richmond, which has been a track that, you know, is a track I usually get lapped. Um, so I think that's those things, you know, figuring out those small victories, um, and yeah, hopefully you win, win plenty of races too, but, uh, there are small wins along the way that kind of help build that confidence. And then you mentioned seven times, you mentioned 
the people's champ. I mean, when you're coming into a place like Hendrick and you have those guys, you know, and now fast forward to 2021 and, and Chase hasn't won and here you are leading the charge. Did you expect to be the top guy at Hendrick this soon in your career? Um, I mean, I always expect a lot out of myself, but uh, yeah, I mean, I never really look at it as trying to be the top person at Hendrick. I just kind of look at the overall perspective of the, of the whole series, but yeah, it's nice to, you, know, you never want to be kind of the, the last guy or you never want to be struggling when all your teammates are winning. So uh, that, that's kind of the biggest thing. Just try to try to ride the wave, you know, if everyone is doing well, you know, try to be part of that. So I um, feel like we're doing that right now. Super. Appreciate your time. Good luck this weekend. Thank you. William, thanks again for joining us, and we'll see you this weekend at Kansas Speedway. Safe travels. Yeah, thank you, guys.